Most of us have experienced the loss of a loved one. Sometimes it may have been illogical, like the death of a child, or sudden, or even expected. Nevertheless, today we can relate directly with Mary and Martha and the way they felt at the loss of their brother Lazarus. Martha's reproach to Jesus for not arriving earlier echoes deep hurt, anger, and resentment, which may have also been felt by many against God as they have gone through a relative's or a friend's death. Our humanity, our vulnerability, and pain of separation may bring questions like the goodness of God, the meaning of mortal life, and the nature of the hereafter. In other words, heaven. Today's gospel deals with the last and the most spectacular of Jesus' signs, according to the gospel writer. Jesus, the one who has given light to the blind, who made the paralytic walk, and the woman at the well convert today manifests his power even over death itself. Jesus never used his power or the signs he performed to demonstrate his divinity. He didn't perform miracles to prove who he was. His miracles were a consequence of the love of God for his creation and the answer to people's faith. But this particular sign, Lazarus' resurrection, is somehow different. It is tainted by the fact that Jesus knew Lazarus. He was not just one of many lepers at the foot of the road, anonymous, and perhaps literally even faceless. This was not the daughter of the foreign woman who asked for her child to be healed from afar. This time, the one recipient of God's mercy was not a foreigner, was not an anonymous entity, and was not at a considerable distance. He was a friend. When pain has a face, a name, and an identity, it acquires personal connotations. It calls upon our most intimate human fiber and sense of being. This death of a friend touched a chord into Jesus' sense of history with Lazarus and into his humanity and human heart. Jesus wept. And from the bounty of God's mercy and from his heart, he called upon Lazarus to life once again. This sign, though not meant to prove Jesus' divinity, speaks volumes of it as well as his human heart. He was moved as God and as a man to bestow God's love for his people. And what is the result of this? What is the result of God's love over his children, over his friends, over his creation? Resurrection. It spills all over human nature and activity. It even spills over mortal flesh. No longer does death have a claim on us because Jesus call us from the womb of mortal inertia. Now, in God's eyes, we have a name, and he uses it as he calls us to new life. This is a gospel of hope, and it tells us that God is stronger than any 
force known to us, even death, he shall bring all who are his friends, all who have faith, and all who do his will into a deeper and more personal relationship with him to what is known as eternal life. As we approach Holy Week, let us join Jesus in his passion and death. Let us deepen our journey and relationship with him, with our prayer, our sense of penance, through fasting and abstinence, our acts of charity and personal conversion. Let us turn them into the soil that will embrace and shelter the body of the Nazarene on Good Friday. And let us enjoy the results of his love. After all, we know the end of the story, an empty sepulcher.